Good evening everyone and thank you for coming to Adapt Chanel's 4 Days World where we do soap opera reviews. The soap opera we're going to be reviewing today is The Young and the Restless that aired Eastern Standard Time um, 3 o'clock p.m. on June 1st which is Tuesday 2016. Okay just to give you a little summary of today's uh, particular episode of The Young and the Restless we have Nikki defends Neil, Jill and Hillary fight for the spotlight and the jig is up for Victoria. Okay. We're going into where we're talking with Kane. Or we're seeing a scene with Kane. He's talking with Catherine Chancellor's plaque. I'm not sure if she's buried there in the park or not. But anyway, he's in the park location of where they dedicated this park to her and her name. And she has this like plaque of remembrance of her. Of what she stood for and all this, that and the other. And he's uh, talking to her. Pretty much saying he wished she was there uh, so he could come to her for advice about how he is letting Hillary pretty much take over his life and making decisions where he made poor judgment where he wanted to put Hillary's mother and uh, Catherine's uh, memory in a wing where they were um, promoting both women but in a sense um, Hillary was writing off of Catherine's legacy and her name for her mother and trying to mix it up all together when um, Kane knew and his mother Jill definitely drove it home for him not in a nice way but she pretty much cussed him out real bad about trying to uh, dim Catherine's shine when you know she was like the um, what do you call it the rich billionaire uh, woman that stayed in Genoa City. Everybody knew about her, knew her struggles and this, that, and that. And she's very affluent in the community and to have some, you know, nameless person that in their own right uh, may have had some things going on, but not at the caliber of Ch Catherine Chancellor. And he's apologizing to Catherine for that little deba debacle or fiasco. <coughs> But he's wishing that he could talk with her in person just about a lot of other things that's going on. Uh, especially with Neil. And he's having to have to keep a secret that Neil is drinking again. He's off his sobriety. So he just hates keeping secrets from his wife because that's pretty much tore up their whole relationship um, from the beginning. With secrets, excuse me, and lies. Um, and so as he's pleading his heart out to this like stone wall that has her plaque and gray with her name and stuff. Nikki overhears this conversation and she offers her help of any that she can give to Kane. And we leave that situation. We go into Lily and Neil. Uh, Lily, well Neil tells Lily, thank you for hosting the Chancellor event dedications wing to the um, rehabilitation center they're starting at um, the hospital uh, for alcoholics and other substance abuse type individuals and she's like I ain't doing it for you dad I'm doing it for Miss Chancellor she was an outstanding person in the community and you know she left us a boatload of money and this that and that so she is you know uh, a person that has more morals and values and vision but you dad uh, you know how I feel about you Nick get on out my way now pretty much what she was trying to say uh, then we go to the scene where we have Jack, Phyllis, Jill, Hillary, and Devon. Jill wants to know the agenda. She wants to know the day's events concerning her. Really, she considers her mentor her mom, even though she had her own biological mom, and she thought Catherine that was at one time. But it is what it is. Uh, how they played it up and all this. But because Catherine really did treat her like a daughter at the end, she left her a boatload of money as well. So, she's just saying, okay, we, you know, we need to go on these things, you know, and I'm speaking and this, that, and that. She's just, you know, all happy and go look. And then Hillary comes in like she always does, interrupts. And then she goes on to tell um, Jack about, she needs to talk with him about speech. And then pretty much Jill just shut her down. <laughs> she told her, don't even think she's getting up to that mic trying to express anything on Catherine Chancellor. She don't know her. She only know of her and what little spiel that she gets in her behavior, how she treats people. 
Catherine would be fully ashamed for her to even say anything about her. So she told uh, Hillary to just sit her little bitsy butt some that somewhere down in the audience in the back. She don't care, but she will not be making any uh, type of uh, display as far as announcing or talking about the uh, wing that they're dedicating on behalf of Catherine's chancellor's memory. So. She pretty much gets nasty with her back. Devon jumps in, you know, trying to tell the women stop catfighting. Um, Jack even uh, takes up for Hillary saying she's just opening up everything. She's not going to be up there, you know, no long speeches for her. It's just like a five-minute deal just to introduce you and just that and the other. And she like, she ain't got to introduce me. Now I introduce myself and take over the whole show in, in Caboodle if have to be. Now get away from me pretty much. Go, leave this table. I don't even want to see your presence. Pretty much is what she tells um, Hillary and Jack of anybody else wanted to go too. But uh, Hillary and what do you call it? Uh, Hillary and Devon just, you know, take it all in what it is because he knows Jill. He knows Jill a lot longer than Hillary and he knows her antics and this, that, and the other. So we move on from that situation. We go to Summer and Luca. Summer's walking up at, uh, walking in at Luca's. My man. No, I'm sorry. She's uh, actually waking up the next morning with Lucas. She noticed how long she's been with him. She don't really have any change of clothing because she stayed at the athletic club with him in his suite. And, you know, she said, oh, I got to go. I got to change clothes. Oh, uh, excuse me, because I have to be there for the chancellor's um, ceremony announcement of the new wing, this, that, and the other. And she goes, he goes on to tell her that, nah, just stay a little longer. So we leave that situation. We go to Victoria and Billy. Victoria, Victoria has waken up uh, from sleeping on the couch, from passing out on two glasses of wine or something to that nature. And um, she goes, gets her memory together. She jumps off the sofa and then goes to check on Billy. I mean, check on Johnny as she's trying to um, come up the stairs. Billy is already on his way downstairs. Telling her, you know, no need of going up. He's fine. I just checked on him. He has no fever. Uh, he says he feels a little bit better. Uh, he just need a little bit more rest. And everybody just, you know, doting on him. But he's going to be fine. He's not throwing up anymore. And, you know, let's just chill. So, she doesn't try to go up there anymore. We go to commercial. We come back. We're on Kane and Nikki. Kane is telling Nikki he's just uh, walking a fine line with his family dynamics. Nikki says she often asks Catherine what would Catherine do, uh, you know, when she got into a situation that she couldn't handle. She just needed a second opinion uh, of a person she really trusted and, and could confide in. Uh, both of remembering her and how well she was a great listener and she gave out good advice. Kane don't understand why uh, Neil is drinking again. And, you know, he pretty much goes into talking and on um, talking about the situation anonymously however nick is a smart woman she figures out he's talking about neil uh, and he's consulting with nikki letting uh about it he's saying you know what came it's just like a a, a a day in and a day out with somebody that's um uh, uh excuse me Whew. that has a substance abuse issue whether it's alcohol drugs pill popping you know injecting yourself anything such of that nature it's a uh, minute by minute second by second day by day struggle so you just gonna have to understand that the only person that can change that person is that person themselves and i'm just gonna throw in there god you know they need to be very prayerful that definitely helps it wouldn't hinder any situation but he basically she basically just says you know it has to be that person that person has to make a change and even though they may fall down many many times if they have a um any you know type of um feeling that they don't want to give up they just have to keep picking their sales up as long as they keep picking their sales up and not stay there and you know let that be their demise that's when the struggle and the fight is over but as long as they got breath in their body they can continue to keep picking themselves up so uh she goes on to tell him about how hard it is about her sobriety and this that and the other and you know it's just you know it's just detrimental to everyone that's involved Ooh, excuse me with the person that has the affliction so 
she gave him some insight and he was like taking it all in and then they went on uh in to get ready for the uh dedication ceremony on behalf of uh Catherine Chancellor's name and her legacy. We leave there, we go to Neil and Lily. Neil is still trying to apologize to Lily. Lily, I don't want to hear that mess, okay? We go to Hillary and Jill. Hillary is telling Jill to relax, and Jill is pretty much tearing into her again like she just don't get it. Jill is not the woman to be messed with. She will uh, come for you, and she will drag you, drag you, drag you, drag you, drag you, until she feels like she want to continue dragging you <laughs> some more. And then if she tired, she'll just leave you alone, and hopefully you will leave her alone, but if not, the cycle will start back again. Then, you know, like I said, Jack was trying to take her for it. She goes into Jack. Uh, and you know, just pretty much rolls over um, Jack and then bulldoze her way over Jack and just tell them both to pretty much fall the crap back, okay? And so we go to uh, Jill, she gets she's tired of both of them, so she just leaves herself because she said oh, she don't want to hear about it. Uh, Hillary would not be not making any introduction of her. She would definitely make sure of that. And she did, y'all. She really did. She pushed the bar right on outside the, the podium. She just went on and did what she had to do. But anyway, before the um, festivities took place, she just left Jack and Hillary just talking to themselves because she didn't want to hear shit no more. And Phyllis went up and got out because she didn't want to hear it no more. And that's when Hillary just slid down in Phyllis' seat and tried to go over the agenda of the day's events of how she's going to introduce everybody. Excuse me. But like I said, after um prior to that, Jill just left them both. All three of them went to the bar to get her blood and mirror uh, on very light rocks, which is ice. And who's there? Guess who's there serving up the drinks uh, this time? Honey, it's Bethany, the lady that she saw in Catherine Chancellor's house that she signed over to her son, Billy. She's like, I know you. Your name Brittany. And then she said, no, that's not my name. She said, well, I got I may be old, but I have a very good memory, and that's the name that Billy gave you. And then she said, yeah, but that's not her name. And then she started laughing like, okay, I told you you was a trick. <laughs> he didn't even take the time to learn your name, baby. You need to leave him alone. He is no good, I'm telling you. Uh, then we leave that situation. We go to Victoria and Billy. Both of them are fussing. Billy's still trying to say, let's tell each other the truth. Let's tell each other who we're sleeping with. Okay. Uh, Victoria feels some kind of way about it because she got her wits about herself now. She's fully focused and she ain't trying to hear that mess. She ain't trying to hear it from Billy or nothing. So then we go to Travis. Travis is on the phone at his bar. He's telling somebody on the telephone that he needs a loan. I don't know if he's talking to a bank representative or a loan processor or a, sh a loan shark. Who knows? But he's having trouble with his air conditioner unit and he's seeing if he can um, get some money to repair it because he can't be you know, in an establishment and have no type of air and expecting people to come by and, you know, shoot the breeze at, you know, at the little bar he has and they'd be so uncomfortable with the weather and the heat, it's not going to happen. So, uh, pretty much he's getting rough with the person over the telephone and the spy guy or the investigator, uh, Luca, has... Um, what has watch on uh victoria's coming can, comings and goings uh as well as travis interacting with her he calls luca and tell him you know hey uh the guy that owns this bar that's seeing victoria he's having some financial trouble so uh luca's telling him to stay tight stay put get as much information as you uh can get and then report back to him later so we leave that situation we go to summer and luca summer pitches an idea to luca about um, their plans and plans with Newman Enterprises and this, that, and the other. We go to commercial. We come back from commercial. We're still on the same two people, Summer and Luca. Summer thinks it's time for them to move uh, their little relationship up a notch. She's asking Luca would he mind moving in with her. Of course, Luca, Luca jump up at, at the idea. That's probably what he's been waiting for all along. He's ready to leave that little suite he has at the athletic club. And he says, sure, baby, I'll move on in with you. So she's all giggly and happy about it. They kiss again, you know, while they're getting ready to go out to the memorial. Uh, well, not memorial service, but a celebration service of a new wing dedicated to Catherine. 
And uh, we leave that situation. We go to Victoria and Billy. Billy is telling her he slept with Bethany. And I'm like, really, Billy? Really? Yeah, that's the last person you slept with. But you didn't tell her who you was really sleeping with. But you wanted Victoria to drop the goods on you. But, you know, she's peep game. She, like, she still didn't tell you who she was sleeping with. Ah, hi, Billy. Ah, hi, Billy. But anyway, Billy didn't tell the truth. Hell, he wasn't going to tell the truth because it was Phyllis. So if you're going to drop tea like that on your um, ex-wife, then don't you think you need to be very truthful with her tell her yes you thought you had plans with Philly which is Phyllis which is um your brother's wife Jack and um then you slept with Bethany okay you could have put it like that but you ain't tell the truth you told half the truth anyway we move from that situation we go to Jill and Bethany Jill is telling Bethany uh, she knows she loves her son or she's enticed with him. She knows he's a charmer and he happens to be filthy rich. Jill tells her to leave him alone because he's going to uh, throw you away like a dirty cup. <laughs> she was crazy. But anyway, uh, pretty much Bethany gets the hint. I don't know if she's going to play back up to Billy just to uh, spite Jill. Because Jill plans on staying in town, I guess, a little more time after uh, the dedication of uh, Catherine's uh, wing. But it's probably not going to be for a long spiel. But she just wants to make sure Billy's on the uh, right track. But she ain't going to be leaving too uh, fast, too soon. Because something comes up with Billy at the end of this episode. Uh, we go on from that situation. We go to Neil and Nikki. Uh, both are making small talk at one another. She tells Neil to call on her if he need anything. Or he just want to talk. Or he uh, feels like he want to take that drink or whatever. They're kind of like sponsor buddies to each other. You know, they can kind of tell when another uh, addict or substance abuser is, you know, really needing a fix. So, uh, you know, he says, okay, fine, I got you. You got me. We understand each other. But as the... Um, ceremony goes along she can tell Neil is struggling with something and it, she feels it has something to do with his addiction to alcohol we leave that situation we go to Hillary and Jack Hillary apologized to Jack and she feels she over if he feels she overstepped her boundaries but Jack takes up for her again uh, against Phyllis you know better judgment because she she even leaves too and just walks away and go outside to the park uh that's dedicated to Catherine because she just got tired of jack not seeing what um hillary is really trying to do we go to commercial we come back we're on nikki and jill nikki is at the athletic club and she runs into jill both are making mean small talks they're taking jabs at each other but it's all in love uh she even goes to tell uh well, in a nice, nasty way, Jill don't don't uh stay too long in town because she don't really want to hear. <laughs> Jill feel is mutual, but that was kind of crazy. Then Esther walks in and um, Nick is glad to see her. She gives her hugs and kisses and all like that. And then Jill started going in on poor Esther. Oh, but they all having a moment together, remembering Catherine in their own fondly way. And, you know, Elsa start tearing into Jill because Jill is tearing into her. Nice and nasty, like I said, but it's all in love. Then she finally gets tired of fooling with Elsa and she goes on to tell Elsa she missed her. She wished she would have just gave her the house instead of giving Billy's the house because Billy done messed up. He done changed the color to some awful gray, but they keep saying blue. But it's the darkest, gloomiest color that you could possibly find to walk into somebody's house. It's not on and popping. It's almost looking like old and cemetery ready. You know, whatever. I mean, she goes on to say she missed the times they used to live under the same roof. Her, Esther, and Catherine. And how they all used to get on each other's nerves. But, you know, all of it was love and this, that, and the other. And, you know, at first... Elsa wanted to hate her, but then, you know, she brought up some very good times that they did share. And so, she just digressed. So, that pretty much got, is getting ready to um, go into the dedication ceremony to the wing. They, um, Jill had put some money to towards it and other um, fine, affluent people of the community did also. Um, then we go to Neil. Neil is trying to, to take a drink 
uh, without anybody noticing him. He sees some empty beverage that somebody may have not drunken out of, or maybe they did, but they left enough for him to get a little buzz because it was that brown alcohol, you know, like strong. Maybe it was scotch, whiskey, I don't know, bourbon. But it was something to take an edge off him. And he was just peeping around to make sure nobody was noticing him. But he didn't take the drink. Uh, then we have Hillary and Devon. Hillary is thanking Devon for taking up for her when uh, her and Jill was going into it for a little bit there. We go to Jack and Summer and Luca. Summer tells Jack that her and Luca are moving in together. And she's all excited about it, but she didn't notice that her grandmama Nikki was walking up behind her. And she tells her to think about it again because that to her is not a good idea, it's not a good thing. And the only reason why they're saying that because uh, the long standing uh, family feud that they don't have with the Satori family, and they kind of like a little mobster family. And she just don't want to be bothered. And, and, and what's his name? Victor wanted to brought him to town him and his family and it's just been a mess ever since but then she goes on because summer apologizes to her because she tells summer she hurt her feelings when she was going in to her about staying with her grandfather and this that and the other and then summer apologized real nice and so nick was like hell you grown enough i can tell you i can only give you my opinion of what i think uh, what I feel about a situation you may have at my doorstep to look at but you're grown if you know He don't treat you right. He know we're gonna be on him We're gonna be on that ass like white on rice So and they both are looking at him both her and Jack like yeah, we will get you honey J uh, um, Victor may be in jail, but we have some powerful strokes too. Okay, so he kind of got like scared or he looked at him like they were scared But he knew they meant business too but he acknowledged that he's not going to do anything to hurt her, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we go to Victoria and Travis. Travis blurts out to Victoria because she done came over there, want to get her little groove on. But I think, you know, like you said, you just came to see me. Why you just can't admit that you just wanted to see me? You had to get away, and that is what it is. And uh, he goes out to say, you know, he needs 20 grand. He knows she can't help him, you know, because she's probably making minimum wage or some, you know, crazy job. And, you know. She kind of takes it some kind of way, but she still just wants to know, you know, what's going on. But he's telling her not to worry about it. They go to commercial. We come back from commercial. Uh, we're at Nikki, Jack, Luca, and Summer. Uh, Summer is talking about she's not needing anyone's approval about Luca and her living together. All of them acknowledge it and say, baby, have, let, let have. Do what you want to do, okay? Okay, we leave that situation. We go to Jewel. Um... I mean, Jill. Jill pushes Hillary out the way because it's ceremony time. Hillary thinks she's finna go to the podium. Jill see her going to the podium. Jill goes up to the podium and like exits her out the way by putting her body <laughs> in the midst, uh, solid right dab center of the podium um, platform. <laughs> and Hillary just go on and push herself back and get on out the way. And then Jill goes in and make her cute but short uh uh, poignant type of speech and she goes in to thank everybody she goes into uh saying this that and that about Catherine, about the struggle you know giving her all the kudos and she unveils this little uh i guess wing or plaque they're gonna have on the wall where the entrance to this wing they're donating uh or dedicating to Catherine chancellor's like the Catherine chancellor's floor or wing of the hospital where the rehabilitation center for substance abuse um, individuals can come for treatment when they have to have to go through the step by step of detox and all that good stuff um, and or protocol I should say and uh, she didn't want help she said she had told Hillary don't get in her way don't get in her way because she was she would roll over her so she showed her she had to show and prove honey she had to show and prove Okay, then we leave that situation. We go to Travis and Victoria. Victoria is listening to Travis money woes and she ain't trying to ask him that, you know, about giving him no money because, you know, that would ruin her cover because she's this Tory person that's supposed to be working, I guess, a minimum wage type job or maybe, you know, maybe a little bit above minimum wage, but it just is what it is. He thinks she's just a hard working woman trying to work for her kids and make sure they have. And she ain't got the kind of money and he don't want to even put that type of situation on her so you know it's kind of fictitious 
But he's going to find out who she is on this particular episode and what she is all about. Okay, we have Phyllis and Billy. Um, Phyllis is sitting there in the park. Billy, you know, he loves to go ride his motorcycle when he ain't got too much to do. He finds her back in the park at the same bench. He always finds her on when she's there being lonely or, you know, something done happen. And she has to be to herself. And he makes a little sly remark about we got to stop meeting this way, da 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 uh, we go to commercial, we come back, we're on Travis and Victoria. Victoria's telling him she wanted to see him, okay, fine. And and that's why she she's there. And then he had said something else smart to her, but it's just because he was having a bad day, and I guess he thought he could talk to her um, a certain kind of way. And she's just like, okay, I ain't got time for you. You you full of bullshit, and, you know, I, I, I'm just not going to be dealing with it. So she walks off. So I don't know if he... Um, what do you call it? GPS her, or put a tracking locator device on her. I don't know. Maybe she told him she worked for the athletic club. I could not understand. But the Joker went right to her. Uh, wherever she was going for the dedication, which was the athletic club. He didn't actually find her at Newman Enterprise, but I guess he followed her. That's all that I could take. That he just left the club. I mean, left his bar. Shortly after she wouldn't return when he was calling her back to come back to her seat at the bar. And she just got mad and left. Uh, I guess he just went and followed her, y'all. Because that's what he followed her to, to the athletic club. And then he got a really big surprise. But then we go to Billy and Phyllis uh, at the park. Uh, Billy's trying to convince Phyllis to take a ride with him on his motorcycle. He, he's telling her she would feel so much better if she goes and do that. And then we go to... we go hmm, Where do we go? Okay, we go to a commercial. We come back to commercial. We have Summer and Luca. Summer says she's ready to go. Because uh, pretty much the ceremony was pretty much over. But she just got tired of waiting. Um, and she didn't want to wait there anymore. Because Phil said it went on. She couldn't find it at first. If she would have went outside, she would have found it in the park. But then, like I said, Billy had pretty much came. And, and whisked her off her feet. And she went for a ride with him. So that's why she couldn't find him. But she just told Luca, let's go. Let's go. Get, get out of here. So they pretty much left the area. We go to Hillary. Hillary, after everything has been said and done, or what Jill wanted to say, it kind of like it needed something else to come up there. So she saw that um, Jill wasn't going to introduce nobody or bring nobody else to the platform. So she went up to the podium and Jill came up, looked like, you know, she wanted to remove her again, say the press conference over. <laughs> but she went on the side of her. Just to make sure she didn't make no moves. Uh, and Hillary gets up there and she says, you know, little words, this, that, and the other. She's pumping uh, Jack and Neil's foundation up and this, that, and the other. And then she goes on and introduces Jack to come to the podium and tell them a little bit more about the comings and goings of the new facility at the hospital and this, that, and the other. Okay, then, you know, he stays his time up there pumping stuff up and giving kudos to Neil. And then he tells Neil to come up and say a few words because, you know, it is his um, foundation as well. Because he's supposed to be an ex, um, what do you call it, or a formal substance abuse user, meaning alcohol. And he was supposed to be the person that set the tone that you can do this. But they didn't know he had fallen off the wagon and this, that, and the other. And it was just eating at Neil from everything that uh, he took his family through and he's taking his family through with this Hillary debacle and with all she has over the head and he just made a mess of everything. Uh, but anyway, he Neil goes up there to tell them or the crowd he is going to be the first person to sign himself into the rehab uh, facility after he's finished making his speech of how great it was and this, that and the other and what it was built for. And he, he astonished everybody or shocks everybody with the um, words that's coming out of his mouth that he's pretty much fell off the wagon. He needs help. Um, he wants everybody to look at it as an experience of, you know, a learning experience that when you think you got your life together, sometimes it's not together. You might fall off the wagon. Hopefully you don't. But when you do, you need to come there for help. So he's going to be their first patient uh, to treat him to get him back on his sobriety uh and then some reporter comes in and say you know could this be because your son married your ex-wife and this that and that so that puts you off you know track and then he goes in trying to explain it 
to you know what really drove him off the edge or you know just trying to put things in a light lighter manner when nikki comes out the crowd and she goes in to say she'll handle it for him you know because they, they buddies and um you know that's what you do when you see your buddy you know drown you go and help him out and she had a little mean spirit on her anyway and she wanted to tag into that reporter because what he asked was just not the time or the place to be doing some shit like that especially with somebody pouring their heart out and telling the public you know because it is a news conference you know people gonna be going back reporting shit that he fell out the wagon but he noticed he can't continue to go down that road it's gonna come something worse like he gonna hurt himself hurt somebody else or you know he gonna end up dying so uh Nikki comes to the podium and she goes into a very beautiful speech about him and what he's doing and what the uh, rehabilitation center is there for and she brings the crowd back over uh, in a positive spin and then she nice nasty ditch uh, tells that a reporter off <laughs> like only a rich beautiful woman such as herself inside out and got the coins to say it and, and, and put him in a bad head spin so oh it's back on Sean. Sean. It's back on. Oh, wow. oh, well, anyway, that's my daughter. She, I let her know when something was coming back on. And she fell asleep, y'all. So I'm sorry for interfering with my dialogue with you all. Forgive me. But uh, Travis, uh, as um, Nikki finished her... Turn it down, Chauncey. Uh, after... Uh, Nikki finished her nice nasty kind of uh, return back as we say we playing tennis that uh, a reporter served something up on uh, what do you call it turn that down Sean um, he served to play up for Neil and she just you know saved him and served to play back up which he didn't get so it was like love Nikki <laughs> or you know in tennis you know, technical talk so zero for the reporter, 15 love <laughs> for Nikki. But um, that was pretty much it, guys. Uh, she introduced uh, her daughter to come up because she saw Victoria in the crowd because they had donated $5 million, okay? That was the big surprise. So I don't know what, how many coins maybe Jill uh, put in, 500000 or maybe she gave a million. But honey, she can't fool with them Newman signing. I think, uh, yeah, um, what it was, Victor tried to buy Miss Chancellor out one time, so, but Chancellor got some money, but she ain't got that kind of money, you know what I'm saying, she got old money, but Victor came up and passed, surpassed her a long time ago before she even died off the show, okay, so yeah, she got Newman Drop Bank coin that it goes so far deep, it can go into the abyss, you know what I'm saying, so they had, you know, Victoria came up there and gave a short little speech and she said on behalf of the Newman uh, family uh, and their foundations they have, they're going to drop in that bucket to make sure that um, what the good work Jack and Neil have started, they're going to make sure it, it, you know, it stays around for a very, very long time. So they dropped their five million dollar in the bucket and when you know he said she said five million that's when travis walked in the door and she had said the five million but then she said newman enterprises and travis know who the newmans is everybody know who the newmans are so her jig is up her cover is blown and he was so disgusted at her you know because he could have told her she could have told him from the start who she was this that and that and you know now he gonna feel like she came down to his place slumming and all this that and the other and he just don't have no respect for her but he know he needs some coins the bank won't help him out <laughs> so she gonna have to go in her private stash and just fling twenty thousand out of him and say baby what else you need okay i can buy this company from you really and we can really turn it into a serious or organization you know but anyway it is what it is he got his feelings hurt he walked out Victoria knows she got some explaining to do and it just is what it is <laughs> so that's where we were and then um this last and final scene Jack gets a call from somebody I'm guessing it's some hospital people which you know is just right around the corner because hey they right around the corner where they dedicating everything is right around the corner adjacent to the uh athletic club so they ain't got to do nothing go down, go out one door and go into another door but um billy has been in a car accident i don't know what happened 
you know, Phyllis was in that same accident, but somehow she got out of it. So I don't know if they were popping Willis on the streets or whatever, or I don't, I really don't know. Maybe a, a driver didn't see them or whatever, because it seems like Billy is a safe driver, but who knows? Uh, he may have threw caution to the wind, but it was a bad car accident. Again, Billy's unconscious. Phyllis is nowhere to be found, but the little... Uh, sneak peek episode they gave us that should come on tomorrow they uh show her in some kind of uh bathroom and she has a big deep bruise on her shoulder so jack gonna figure it something out that they were together if she tried to lie her way out because he's gonna he's good at putting two and two together so uh anyway that was the young and the restless that aired for june 1st which is tuesday 2016 of uh, the young and the restless aired at three o'clock eastern standard time my time um it was a pretty good episode i got my chuckles especially with Gio. Gio always give me uh good drama good drama with chuckles okay but uh yeah that's all we have for today i look forward to narrating for you tomorrow with my visuals and uh we'll see you then blessings and good night